Stimwalt here. Remember to check the video description to find all the parts that I used in this video. Install over the range GE microwave yourself. This is for 2022 and greater GE microwaves. Check the unit for damage before the return window is up. Usually it's 24 to 48 hours after you get the box. Next, read the box instructions and cut along that cut line. It'll be at the bottom and you'll want a really good box cutter and go all around the box. Next, lift the box vertically, read the manual inside and check all of the parts. So when you lift it up, be careful because there are parts at the top of the box behind some styrofoam. So I recommend you lift it over the microwave and kind of lay it on its side. You'll see behind the styrofoam are additional parts. I went ahead and removed it. And you'll see we've got a bracket. We have a bag with the instructions and some additional parts in there. We have the bolts and screws and some additional parts. This is if you use a exhaust vent out the back of the microwave. And we've got the tray and the little rolly thing that goes under the tray. And I also put the styrofoam on top of the range that's still in place. So read all the instructions fully, plan your exhaust setup now. My setup will be recirculating the air, but yours may not be. You may have an exhaust vent out the back of your microwave or up through the cabinet. So know the difference and know the parts. Also make sure you read the templates. This is the rear wall template, and this is the upper cabinet template. Prepare tool arsenal for supreme victory. So it's important to have a good amount of tools for this. Obviously have a drill with some drill bits. You'll also want to have that nice box cutter. It's good to have a level. Also, if you need a mechanic light, it's really helpful. Hand tools are great to have. Stud finder is great to have. And a, a weaker electric drill is good to have. If unable to move the range, protect with ample padding. So I just put all the styrofoam and some cardboard underneath the old microwave and above the range. So you're gonna remove all the items from that cabinet and unplug the old microwave. Unplug it first, then do sort of an assessment and see what we're dealing with up here. Obviously this is a really dirty upper cabinet, but you see they used washers and bolts for this KitchenAid microwave that we're replacing. Might want to do an assessment just to see how many other holes are in place already. I do recommend in this case that someone do a little patching and painting up here. Check for strip screws, loosen only a little bit. So we're going to use a, a weaker electric just to see if these screws are stripped. If we can move them, then I'm pretty confident that we can use the power drill but don't just immediately use the power drill at maximum torque and just strip your screws. So you're gonna hold the microwave from below, fully loosen all the screws, then lift the microwave from the back and rest it down in a safe place. Obviously have that place figured out before you do this, but you're just gonna lift from the back and you're gonna put it in your safe spot. So compare the existing wall bracket and replace it if it's not an exact match. This should be really obvious when you hold it up to the one that's still mounted. This is not going to work. The KitchenAid and the GE microwaves have different brackets. So you're going to start loosening and you're going to sort of pull on the back of the metal to get it out. This is a butterfly screw. You'll be using this again for the new bracket. And what's going to happen is the screw is going to come out and the back will just fall into the drywall. So read the template instructions and begin your rear bracket setup. Here it says you want to trim along the dotted line, so do that. So I'm also going to use some tape all along the back and I sort of fold it on top of each other to create like a double-sided tape almost and do it all around the template. Find at least one stud and mark it with a pencil. So it's a very important part of this process. You want the microwave to be mounted with at least one wooden screw to a stud. You can use two additional screws, which will be butterfly screws that'll hang on the drywall. So add the rear wall template, mark three holes for A, B, and C. And they can be anywhere in that region. So you just need to figure out what is the optimal spot. 
I'll go ahead and remove the template from the wall and use the butterfly screws. And you can see how I added sort of a hole with the drill so that I can fit the butterfly screw in to those holes. I already did one on the far left, A butterfly screws in. So you need one wood screw, two butterflies, and then check for level. I ended up doing the wood screw on the right where there was a stud and two butterfly screws in the middle and on the left, and it's perfectly level. Read the upper cabinet template, cut and tape on the upper cabinet. So for this one, I needed to use the half an inch trim. So that's what I did, and I just trimmed all along the template. I marked the holes with a pencil and drill holes if needed. And by some miracle, the two holes were aligned already for the pre-drilled screws in my upper cabinet. So now we're going to access the fan motor if it's needed and then make sure that your setup is being used. So I'm going to pull the motor out and make sure that it's set up to recirculate. There's a few screws you have to remove here. These two mount the motor in. And then I pull it out and see that it's it's in the correct orientation. It's basically facing forward for recirculation. Read the manual, make sure that you're doing this correctly. So plug in the microwave and test the exhaust fan. So you don't have to mount it, just plug it in and then just see if the air is coming out the way you expect. If it is, you're ready to put it in. Read the exhaust instructions, apply correct shielding. So for recirculation, what I need to do is basically shield up the top and the back, keeping all of the heat and the exhaust from circulating out the back or the upper part of the cabinet. It needs to be all moving out the front of the microwave for recirculating. If you do have a exhaust vent, then obviously this is going to be different. You'll probably be exhausting out the back or the top of the microwave, and you'll be using different parts as well. But for me, I'm doing recirculation, so I have to shield the top and the back to make sure all the air goes out the front of the microwave. So we're gonna add some screws. Guide the cord through the hole, lift the microwave on the back bracket. So this part's a little tricky. I do recommend you have two people for this, but put the cord through that hole and lift it up. Support the microwave with your arms and hand tighten the screw in to make sure that it's being held up. And definitely hand tighten first before you use any power tools because you don't want to strip anything here. That's a very expensive mistake and you can hand tighten it. Check the hinges below the microwave, verify that the fit is very solid and you can tell pretty easily if it's inside those hinges. Plug in the microwave and remove the plastic. Definitely my favorite part of an install, removing the plastic. From below the microwave, apply the two grease filters and it's pretty easy. You just sort of slide it in almost. You push it in and then pull it back on that track. And there's two of them. And you can go ahead and test just one more time that the fan works. Make celebratory popcorn casually mention install to anyone who will listen. Good job, you did it yourself. If you want to see more, don't forget to like, subscribe, and enable notifications.